So it has been a while, but we are back with another episode of the Championship Transfer Room around them. And we've got a lot of action to catch up on in today's video. So the normal schedule will be resumed from now on. And we've had some mad rumours going on in the past few days. As well as a lot of complete deals, which we'll also touch on in today's video. So as always, do get your thoughts in the comments down below as to what have you made of all the recent deals and speculation. So before we do get into any transfer news, I thought we'd start the video out by talking about the Steve Bruce situation currently unfolding between Sheffield Wednesday and Newcastle United. This rumour had been rumbling on for a couple of weeks beforehand, but it really seems to have reached boiling point now with Steve Bruce handing in his resignation at Sheffield Wednesday along with his backroom staff there. On the face of things, you may think that move would make sense for Steve Bruce, you know, swapping the championship for the Premier League, but when you look into the intricacies of what's going on at both clubs at the moment and the way he's actually going about forcing this deal through, I think it'll leave a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. I think with Sheffield Wednesday, they were going into next season with a lot of optimism under Steve Bruce. All the fans had bought into the project. There was clearly loyalty and backing shown by the club towards Steve Bruce, and that's been completely thrown back in their face now with Bruce going on to resign. He's swapping Sheffield Wednesday, a club on the up for a team like Newcastle, Castle Way is probably going to be another yes man for Mike Ashley in the Premier League. And with everything that hasn't followed over the past few days, I don't think he's particularly popular with the Wednesday or Newcastle fans at this point. I would love to get your guys' verdict on what you make of the whole situation and in regards to Wednesday fans, who would you like to see replace him? But we'll move on now into some of the completed deals we've seen go through in the past seven days. Bradley Johnson has been on the move. He's gone to Blackburn Rovers on the free transfer. Blackburn have been making some pretty decent moves, I've got to say. Bradley Johnson on the free, a really good deal, as well as bringing in Sam Gallagher, the striker from Southampton for a fee of around about £5 million, pounds, so Blackburn really aren't messing about in this transfer window. Sam Gallagher was on loan at Blackburn a couple of seasons ago where he was able to score 12 goals, and I think that they're looking all right set up for this upcoming season. Jake Bidwell completed the move on a free transfer to Swansea City, the former QPR defender, looks to add a few more numbers and competition into that Swansea squad. West Brom signed Croatian attacking midfielder Filip Kravinovic on a season-long loan from Benfica, quite a highly rated midfielder, will look to add a bit more creativity into that side. Considering all the players that West Brom have let go in this window so far, I think they do need to pull their finger out sooner rather than later and they do need quite a few more faces coming in through the door but if this is you know a sign of things to come then West Brom could still have a promising season and of course one of the players who they have recently let go has been Jay Rodriguez going to Burnley making the move back there that one was on the cards for a while now and West Brom you know that's a tough job to do not to replace one 20 goal season striker but two losing Gale and Rodriguez that's a tough job for Billage. Barnsley have been incredibly busy in this window so far they've already had nine new incoming plays but the one I'm most excited about is Malik Wilkes coming over from Leeds United. He spent last season out on loan at Doncaster in League One. In that time scored 14 goals and got 8 assists. An absolutely rapid winger who I'm looking forward to seeing how he can do this season in the Championship. I think that will be quite a good purchase actually for Barnsley. The only potential snag on this deal is I do believe that the player does have an upcoming court case and obviously the outcome of that could provide to be a snag for the deal. And then we have Pontus Janssen making his move from Leeds United to Brentford in one of the most dramatic transfer sagas we've seen in this window so far. The fee in the end for this one was around about £5 million. There's been a lot of things said, you know, behind closed doors as to why this transfer eventually went through. I think in the past it's been obvious to see that Janssen and Bielsa have had their differences, but what a player Brentford have got on their hands now. What a transfer window in general Brentford have had so far. You know, if you look at last season, their weaknesses were in defence with some of the goals they were conceding in pressured situations, but to add Pontus Janssen to that, a real leader at the back, Brentford are really showing ambition with the players they're going for at the moment. They've also signed Matthias Jensen coming over from Celta Vigo for around about £3.5 million. Ethan Pinnock moved from Barnsley for a fee of around about £3 million to add to that central defence with Janssen. And David Rea came in as a replacement for Daniel Bentley. So, looking at that Brentford squad at the moment, if they do manage to keep hold of Ben Marama and Neil Mapay, they've got one hell of a team going into next season. And a lot of those deals that we just spoke about will have been funded by the money that they got for Esri Konza, who did make his move to Aston Villa for a fee of around about £11 million. I think that Brentford have done, they've done very well in recent years with transfer fees they've received for some of their players. And the way they go about reinvesting that money, they're absolutely superb at picking up some gems. Not to give Forrest have been another club who have been busy in the past few weeks of this transfer window. They brought in Sami Amiobi and Albert Adoma both in on free transfers, as well as picking up highly rated goalkeeper Murich from Manchester City on a season long loan. I think that will be an upgrade on Pantilimon. As well as those deals, they picked up a couple of players from Benfica, which I'm very excited about. Left back Yuri Ribeiro has moved over on a permanent transfer from Benfica, and Alpha Semedo has joined up on a loan. Wigan Athletic, also a club who are very interested in his services. Although, probably the most exciting deal is signing Thiago Silva for a fee of around about £2 million comes in as a very dynamic midfielder and looking at their potential starting 11 for next season if all these new players 
clicking instantly. There's no reason why they can't be in that bracket with the top six next season. You know, if they add maybe another right back and possibly another striker into that squad, they're looking quite healthy. There seems to be a bit of a fire sale with Luton Town defenders at the moment. Jack Stacey's been the latest player to leave. He's headed to the Premier League with Bournemouth for a fee of around about four million pounds. Wigan have finally started their transfer business. They brought an experienced goalkeeper, David Marshall, a position they were in need of strength. I think that would be a good deal for them. And Lewis McLeod as well, formerly of Brentford, also coming in to add to that midfield. Another impressive signing for Wigan. Millwall have also been added into their squad. They brought in Conor Mahoney to add another wide option into that squad. I was fairly impressed with him in his loan spell last season out on loan at Birmingham. I think he'll do fairly well at Millwall. And John Daddy Bob Vartan's also coming in to Millwall, making the move over from Reading. Considering his game time last season, his goals to game ratio wasn't actually that bad. He made nine starts and 11 appearances off the bench for Reading last season. In that time, scored seven goals. Triple Wednesday also completed deals for Julian Borner, Moses Adabadjo, and Kadeem Harris. They had those signings lined up for a few weeks now, but have finally been able to announce them. Obviously, with there being a lot of media attention on Sheffield Wednesday at the moment with the whole Steve Bruce situation. It'll be interesting to see how they unfold under probably a new manager now. Kieran Dow completed the loan move to Derby County. He's going to look to go into that midfield and fill the void of Mason Mount. Not an easy job to do, but I think that that will sort of go to soften the blow a little bit. I think when given game time in the championship, Kieran Dow can be quite an effective player. I think if he's played in the right system, Derby have got a good player on their hands there. Callum Robinson completed the move to Sheffield United, moving from Preston off end. The fee in the end of around about seven to eight million pounds this one was always going to happen in my view you know he only had one year left in his contract Preston were never going to let him run down that contract and leave in the free so as soon as the right bid did come in Robinson was always going to leave I am sad to see him go I thought he really came into his own last season despite being out injured for a large chunk of the season he went on to get double figures had a very good games to goal ratio and for a left forward who does score as many goals as Robinson does that's going to be a really tough player for us to replace in terms of him moving to the Premier League though I do wish him all the best it's interesting that he's gone to Sheffield United you know a side who doesn't play with wingers so it'll be interesting to see where he does fit into that system probably looking to play off someone like Billy Sharp he's quite a diverse forward in the fact that he can fill in a number of roles you know he can be that man leading the line and he's quite good at playing as sort of a false line playing off a striker in that sort of David McGoldrick role so I can see those two interchanging throughout the season and overall I think it'll be a good deal for him I think he'll do well there Reading have signed highly rated goalkeeper Joe Virginia on loan from Everton for the season and Helbert Botcorn has made his move over from Borussia Dortmund moving to Huddersfield Town Hull City completed the signing of target man Tom Eves coming over from Gillingham after scoring 21 goals in League One last season looking forward to seeing how he adapts to the league and Fulham completed the loan signing of Ivan Cavallero coming over from Wolves for the season and I must say looking at their potential starting loan for next season it looks absolutely devastating last time Cavallero was in the championship he scored nine goals and picked up 12 assists and with him linking up with Mitrovic next season what a combo that could be but guys they were some of the most recently completed deals which have gone through in the championship if you've missed any out let me know about them in the comments down below but now without further ado, let's hop into some transfer rumours. And starting out with Fulham, who have been linked to Brighton winger Anthony Knockart. What a front three that would be if they had Cavalero on the left, Mitrovic up front, and then Knockart on the right. That would be an absolutely unbelievable forward three for the Championship. Last time he was in the Championship for Brighton, he scored 15 goals and picked up eight assists in an absolutely fantastic season when Brighton got promoted. Since moving up to the Premier League, he's not quite been as prolific. He scored five goals in his two seasons so far. So perhaps a move back to the Championship could be on the cards with this player. The fee being talked about is around about £15 million pounds, and that's probably the right going rate for a player of knockouts quality in this market. And another player on Fulham's radar has been Mo Bessic. He spent last season out alone at Middlesbrough. In his time in the Championship, I've always been very impressed with the holding midfielder. Not a player who's particularly wanted by Everton, so the move would make sense. The fee would be around about £5 million. Pounds. He'd come in and add a bit more dynamism to that midfield, look to link up with someone like Tom Kearney moving forward. And it would be another quite high-profile signing for Fulham if they did pull that one off. And the move which does look to be all but over the line is David Nugent, the free agent, making move back to his former club, Preston North End. He was at our recent friendly against AFC File, and by the time you guys will be watching this, the deal may have already been announced. Between 2004 and 2007, David Nugent has made over 100 appearances for Preston, and he comes at the age of 34. Is he going to be a prolific striker for us next season? No, he's not. But he comes into a fairly young squad to add a bit of experience, and I think that what he can offer us both on and off the pitch, I think it's worth a gamble on a free transfer. It'll create a buzz off the pitch, and who knows, he could even chip in with a few goals throughout the season, so I don't see all too much wrong with that signing really. Preston have already shown so far that we are in the market for a goalkeeper after missing out on Murich. And one player who has been linked is Brighton goalkeeper Christian Walton who has spent his last two seasons out on loan at Wigan Athletic. It's certainly one to keep your eye on as this does look to be a position where Alex Neal is looking to strengthen over this window. With Callum Robinson leaving Preston we are in need of a little bit more down that left hand side and potentially we could be seeing Brandon Barker making the loan move back to North End. He was injured for large parts of last season so we only really saw little glimpses of him but he did have some real bursts of quality you know 
know, that game against Leeds in the League Cup where he scored that absolutely dazzling goal was a fine example of that. If he was able to stay fit, I think we would have a quality player on our hands there and I wouldn't be against this deal. It's just the fact that he has been so injury prone throughout his career so far. And the links with Preston and Jordan Hugel remain to be there. North End fans, let me know down below, would you like to see us move back in for Jordan Hugel? It's definitely one that I think will continue to rumble on throughout the transfer window as the striker isn't really wanted by West Ham anymore. And there has been talk of Burnley going in for Kamar Roof and Click of Leeds United. Obviously, there has been a bit of previous between these two clubs making deals in the past with Chris Wood and Charlie Taylor both making the switch from Leeds to Burnley. And Roof's in a bit of an awkward situation at the moment. I believe he's only got 12 months on his contract left at Leeds at this point in time. So either he's going to be making the move in this window or he's going to be signing a new contract. One or the other really needs to happen sooner rather than later. I don't know how much Leeds fans have really been enjoying this transfer window so far because every week it seems like a new transfer rumor pops up with one of their players being linked away from the club. Bristol Sombolonga appears to be a striker in quite high demand at the moment with Celtic, Bristol City and Cardiff all interested in the Borough striker. Despite being a little bit hit or miss while at Middlesbrough, he has popped up with 30 goals in all competitions in his last two seasons there, which isn't bad going at all. Especially being involved in the Pulis side who don't tend to create many chances per 90 minutes, that's not a bad scoring record. And playing in a bit more of an attacking team for next season, whether that be at Middlesbrough under Jonathan Woolgate or elsewhere in the Championship, I think he'd go on to do fairly well. And another striker in high demand is of course going to be Neil Mapay after scoring 25 goals and getting 8 assists for Brentford last season. West Ham are now the latest club to be linked to the Brentford striker, with Sheffield United another club who has been chasing him over the past few weeks. Honestly, I'd quite like to see Neil Mapay stay in the Championship. I think that if Brentford do manage to keep hold of him, they've got a ridiculous team going into next season. They've got some real firepower going forward. They've really bolstered their midfield and with Janssen, Ray and Pinnock coming in at the back, they've got a solid defence in there as well. So if Brentford do keep hold of him pay and they don't sell, they really could be the dark horse for next season. Bristol City remain to be interested in Arsenal youngster Eddie Nekita. I can't say I know all too much about him, but Bristol City do tend to have quite a good track record with loaning youngsters from the Premier League. And Sheffield United have reportedly had a £50 million bid rejected by Swansea for striker Ollie McBurney. Obviously a very highly rated player, only 23 years of age, scored 22 goals last season for Swansea in the Championship. I can see why the interest is there from Sheffield United. I think he'd be a very effective player in their system. But after already losing Daniel James, Swansea are going to look to play hardball with this one for Ollie McBurney. And I say fair play to them for doing that. QPR had to be rejected for Ipswich Town playmaker Alan Judge as a potential replacement for Luke Freeman. It's been reported that Wigan Athletic's approach for Nottingham Forest defender Tendai Dariqua has been rejected for the time being. Obviously, we're going to go in search of a replacement for Reese James, which is no easy feat. But bringing in a player like Tendai Dariqua, I think, will be a decent bit of business for Wigan Athletic. It's not going to be an easy one, though. Forest looking to play hardball as there and no need to sell the player at the moment. It is looking like left back Anthony Robinson will be on his way to Wigan Athletic with the fee being around about £2 million he spent last season out on loan there. I think that's a good bit of business by Wigan. But probably the best bit of business that Wigan could do would be to complete the signing of Jamal Lowe. Now, there has been a lot of championship interest. There's been Millwall, Leeds, West Brom, and a whole bunch of other clubs interested in the Portsmouth winger after scoring 15 goals, amping up eight assists last season. An electric player down that right-hand side. Really exciting player to watch. If Wigan do pull this one off, I would be very impressed. They're showing their intent by spending a bit of money. You know, it did take them a little bit of time to get going in this transfer window, but I think that every Wigan fan, and rightly so, would be absolutely buzzing if this one did get over the line. Ben Osborne could be on his way to the Premier League as Sheffield United remain to be very interested in the player after having already one bid turned down by Forrest. A really hard working player who can fill in a number of positions. I think he'd actually go on to do fairly well with Sheffield United. I think he'd fit into a wing back role fairly well. I think that role would be tailor made for him really. It would probably take a fee of around about £5 million which I think Forrest would be getting a decent deal there. I think this one could go on to work out for both clubs. Aston Villa have made it clear so far that they are in this market for a goalkeeper and the latest one to be linked has been Darren Randolph, the Middlesbrough goalkeeper. Had an exceptional season last time with Borough. I made a video a few weeks ago on one player who I think each championship club needs to keep hold of over this summer transfer window and Darren Randolph was that player for Middlesbrough I thought he was absolutely exceptional last time and building from the foundations at the back if he was to go that would be an almighty loss for Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough are the latest championship club to be linked to Liverpool winger Ryan Kent valued at around about 12 to 15 million pounds he spent last season on the Rangers where he scored six goals and picked up four assists one player I really would love to see in the championship he'd be a top addition for Borough but they face stiff competition from elsewhere Swansea been eyeing up Chelsea attacking midfielder Casey Palmer he spent the second 
second half of last season, out on at Bristol City, where he went on to really impress there. He's a really tidy footballer. I think he fits into the philosophy there at Swansea and add a bit of competition for someone like Burton Selena. Huddersfield right back Tommy Smith is expected to make a move to Stoke City for a fee of around about three to four million pounds. Would be quite a nice addition for Stoke, actually. A really experienced defender. I've always been impressed by him whenever he has spent time in the championship. After being relegated by Huddersfield, it's looking like he's after a new challenge. And I mean, we've said it time and time again, but Stoke are really making moves in this window. Charlie Austin has rejected the chance to go to West Brom. Obviously, West Brom in dire need of replacing their two 20 goal a season strikers from last season. Charlie Austin was the player who they had in mind, but he's rejected the chance to move down to the championship as he wants to fight for his place at Southampton. Well, guys, there you have it. There are some of the latest transfer rumours currently going around the championship. So, if you've seen any others that we didn't mention in today's video, make sure to get them in the comments down below. I think from now on, I'm going to start pushing out two transfer videos per week because we've just got so much going on at the league at the moment. But if you think you want to enjoy, make sure you leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. As well as that, make sure you subscribe for some regular championship content. Get all your thoughts in the comments down below. But apart from that, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.